Okay, so if someone here is asking me, what is Buddhism? Don't worry, we will come back to peyote and all, and all of this. But I need to give you this as a framework first. If somebody asks me, what is Buddhism? Then, to make it very comprehensive and compact, I have to talk four things. I have to talk about the Buddhist view. And then Buddhist practice. And the Buddhist attitude or action, Buddhist behavior. Okay? And Buddhist aim, the result. You got it? Buddhist view, Buddhist practice, Buddhist attitude or the Buddhist behavior, and what is it that we are aiming for? The four things. Uh, <clears throat> now, the Buddhist view, now that is the most important. I will come back to this again and again. If you lose the Buddhist view, practice, behavior, re uh, result, the aim means nothing. So, most important is the Buddhist view. So, what is Buddhist view? What is it? What is the fundamental Buddhist view? You can say, There's something called four seal. That all compounded things are impermanent. All emotions are pain. Everything has no inherently existing nature. Well, actually, these three will do, but an, an extra seal created by Mahayana people. Nirvana is beyond conception. Okay? I, I'll just... This is... Good, I've spit it out all this jargon. Don't worry so much about it right now. So anyway, these four are what we call Buddhist view. Fundamental, the most important. We will come, come back to this sometimes. Now, what is Buddhist practice? This is important. This is, this is important this time. This is what is the essence of the Buddhist practice? Essence of the Buddhist practice must go against duality, dualist, dualistic distinctions. That is the essence of the Buddhist practice. Now, the way how you go against this uh, duality, there is thousands and thousands and thousands of methods. Suppose 84,000. One of them is peyote, well, datura. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not making these things up. I can, uh, you know, find page number for you if it, it, it is taught. Why? Because dualistic distinctions, distinctions creates judgment. Dualistic distinctions creates hope and fear. Dualistic distinctions creates expectations. Dualistic, dualistic distinctions creates Overestimation, underestimation, exaggeration, all of this are created by dualistic distinctions. So, Buddhist practice has to go against it. This is why when we talk about things like mindfulness, if your mindfulness is going against dualistic distinctions, fantastic. You understand? But if your mindfulness practice is 
not going against the dualistic distinctions. Instead, it's creating constipation. Like, oh, am I being mindful? You understand? Then, it's not Buddhist practice. You understand? It's not Buddhist practice. It could bring you relaxation. It could create a good sleep. It could probably help your, you know, relationship with your boyfriend, girlfriend. It could. But remember, that's not the aim for Buddhism. I, I will talk about the aim later. But it, a Buddhist practice has to go against the dualistic distinctions. Now, I didn't take peyote, I mean, I just took a uh, little bit of peyote juice before I came here. <laughs> it's not really doing anything yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I took some other things, even recently, about a week ago. What the substance, this substance, what, the, what's, what these things seems to do is suddenly this substance seems to, you know, like, create, it really upsets this normal dualistic distinctions that we have. Suddenly, that door is so far. <laughs> Suddenly, the cup is so heavy, you understand? Recently, I was with a mother who has a kid. And um, uh, somebody gave this kid a small wooden car. And inside the wooden car is a duck, you know, as a driver. And then the, this, baby, this small boy is crying hard. So I asked mother, what's wrong? Boy wants to go in the car. <laughs> the boy has, regarding specifically with this, boy is not yet stained by adult distinction, uh, dualistic distinctions of size. You understand? Very, you know, innocent, so to speak. And we, you know, we in the, our education system, we then give them the dualistic distinctions. You understand? So, substance could help. But the problem with the substance is it expires in six hours. <laughs> you understand? Then it expires. Then you are back to the normal dualistic distinctions and then even more sad, even more angry, even more disappointed, so on and so forth. So, in theory, sitting on the cushion, sitting straight, hours and hours, but not really going to, going against the dis dualistic distinctions. Yeah. I mean, you are doing a very good job, at least you are not harming anyone. Because you are sitting there, people are saved from you. <laughs> at least. But... Little bit of peyote, or even a little bit of muscal, is it? M muscal. I'm not encouraging you to drink, so please don't quote. <laughs> muscal? Mescal, yeah, and tequila, whatever. It, it cre it's, you know, it shifts you. And I don't know, I'm sure maybe it does, you know, it, it does, you know, what works for somebody, uh, you know, d it doesn't work with others. You know, for me, you know, when these guys, when these miriachis, when they come, it shifts me. It, you know, it's a f fantastic way, you know, I can listen this whole night. It's, it's like amazing, you know, it really just 
takes you somewhere. Okay, anyway, Buddhist view, we, did, we talked a little bit. Buddhist practice, whether it's a meditation, meditation in action, mantras, mudras, whatever, it has to fundamentally go against dualistic distinctions. Okay? Now the Buddhist behavior, what is the Buddhist behavior? Moderation. This is, this is all the teachings of the Buddha. N you know, middle way, not extreme. You know, not, what do you call it? Uh, stuff like extreme penance or overfeeding yourself. Not like, not, not going like this. So it's, it's fairly easy to understand. Mo moderation, you know, very balanced, balanced attitude. That is fundamentally the Buddhist, as essence of the Buddhist behavior. Now the Buddhist result, now this is an interesting, what is Buddhist result? Buddhist result, and you have to pay attention to this one, especially those who are Buddhist. Buddhist result is nothing, okay, usually when we talk about a result, aim, uh, usually when we talk about the aim, we are always talking about something to get, isn't it? Something to get, but not true in Buddhism. In Buddhism, a result is something to eliminate. There's nothing to get, nothing so, nothing whatsoever. But there are things to eliminate. It's a bit like washing dishes. When you wash a dish, what is it that you are doing? Eliminating the dirt. You are not getting a new cup. You understand? You are not getting a new cup or a clean cup, but you are eliminating. This is why even the word Buddha, Buddha, is Buddha reflects this meaning. Buddha means awakened. Awakened. State of awakening, you understand? So it's an it's a, it's a elimination. Elimination of a dark, deep sleep. Ignorance. You got it? So, Buddhist view for seal, Buddhist uh, practice, something that has to go to against the dualistic distinctions, Buddhist action, balance, moderation, and the Buddhist result is elimination. Elim uh, um, uh, well, I don't know how to put this, a Talwin Jebu, which uh, in Tibetan, which is a mm, result of elimination, let's call it. Is it? Do you remember? Tande, Tande, no, result of elimination. This is sort of the what do you call it? Uh, this I want to just put it ahead of what we are going to talk.